Well, hello, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well today. This is Ted Patterson from Critical Path Training. What I wanted to do is discuss the different integration points that we have in Power Apps and Flow with Power BI. So I want to start with a quick Power BI primer uh, just to make sure we can get an app workspace and populate it with some content. And then I want to look at the main three integration points. And the first one we're going to look at is adding Power BI dashboard tiles into a Canvas app. Uh, we'll look at extending Power BI reports with a Canvas app. Uh, and also, we're going to look at designing flows to update real-time dashboards in Power BI. OK, now there is a um, attendee participation event here. So note that um, the very last topic and the very last set of demos is all going to be around monitoring tweets as they come in. So if you take something and put the uh, Power Apps hashtag inside there, you know, so happy to see you in my webinar and have the, oh, that's wrong. Let's go ahead and put the hashtag inside there, big difference between them. Uh, let's go ahead and tweet that. Uh, so what you're going to see here is, you know, over on uh, this flip side over here, uh, you know, we want to be able to monitor these tweets, and that's kind of what we're working towards. So if you have a Twitter account, you want to play along, go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, start up today. So let's begin by introducing Microsoft's, you know, new term for their platform. So Microsoft has called this the business application platform as of July. Uh, they have started calling it the power platform. Uh, and one thing that I have to uh, call out here uh, is that they really like this lowercase p uh, in platform. You know, I've been, uh, I've had my wrist slapped several times by Microsoft people saying, hey, that's a lowercase p. But one of the things that Microsoft is now trying to do is take these, you know, three different players, Power BI, Power Apps, and Microsoft Flow, and position them, you know, as three brothers together, you know, who are the main customization tools and authoring tools in this platform. And one of the things that you'll see today is that people that work with Power BI, you know, don't really use the same set of technologies and concepts that we do in Power Apps and Flow. Power Apps and Flow are very much combined in the fact that they have environments and the way that we share uh, and secure them are very similar. You know, but one of the jobs that Microsoft has over the next couple of years is to convince people that these are really, you know, three brothers, you know, that are all working in hand together, you know, as opposed to you know, step brothers that happen to be in the same house because of married parents. Now, today, I can also say that Power BI is at least a year, you know, maybe a year and a half ahead of the two others in terms of maturity. So lots of people have used Power BI, and they might not quite have the motivation to kind of see why Power Apps or Flow is important. You know, but as you move up, you know, to the architects and the CIOs, then it becomes kind of more clear, you know, how these things work together. Now, let's kind of start with Power BI, and I assume that many of you already know Power BI. Some of you might just be getting started. You know, but in Power BI, we have a couple very important concepts, and I'll just kind of go through them real quick. The first is a workspace. The workspace provides a container that we use to create the other three things, which are basically dashboards and reports and data sets. And so as I start building solutions with Power BI, you know, everything that I do, you know, basically is building, you know, workspaces and starting to add content inside. Now, a couple important things. Microsoft is currently transitioning between two different app workspace models. We've had one for the last couple years where every time we create a new app workspace, we get an Office 365 group, which is created underneath. And that's created uh, several different issues. Uh, some of the issues we have with the V1 workspace is that every time you create an app workspace, you've created this big thing, which is the Office 365 group and the SharePoint team site underneath. You know, so that's one thing we want to get away from. Another big problem with V1 workspaces is that you have to assign members by adding individual user accounts as opposed to adding groups inside there. So Microsoft's currently moving to the V2 workspace, and the V2 work uh, workspace is going to be much better. Let's go ahead and kind of do a quick demo. Uh, let's move over inside here, and you know, let's say I want to create a new app workspace. Well, currently, V1 is the new current you know, um, released version of workspaces, but now they previewed V2 workspaces. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and call this one something like, uh, you know, Thursday uh, demo. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and I'll create this new workspace by clicking try now. And now we'll go ahead and click save. So there's going to be differences between the two, you know, such as if I go to a older workspace right here, uh, you know, what are the kind of things that I can get to if I go to the new workspace, you know, note that we have a settings pane inside here. Uh, and then also, you know, what's going to be uh, much better about this. Notice that when you open this, there's this five second delay where everything's frozen until finally the client side JavaScript catches up. Uh, and then I can either delete or cancel. Okay, but if I go to this workspace and I choose workspace access, you know, what you're going to see is that this is quite different. So you no longer have the idea of read only workspaces versus read write. Currently, we have the admin, the contributor, the member, and Microsoft has committed before they release this to have one other uh, read-only role inside here, you know, for a consumer as well. Now, I've just created this. I want to do all my demos inside here, you know, but one thing to note is that if you're starting today, you should just create B2 workspaces. There's not very many differences between the workspaces to those that are building reports and dashboards. You know, much of the difference goes on behind the scenes, but at some point, Microsoft will, you know, put the V2 workspaces, you know, into a released form. They'll go GA, general availability, and then probably not that long after, they will force us to migrate from V1 to V2 workspaces. You know, so there's really not a good reason to create V1 workspaces because you'll have to migrate to V2 workspaces, you know, sometime in the next year or two. Okay, now what many of us, have done over the last couple years is to start building out content with Power BI Desktop. Let me go ahead and open up a quick solution right here. And the idea of Power BI Desktop is it's a tool that we use to extract data. It's got Power Query uh, facilities built inside there. You know, while I won't do uh, too much of a demo here uh, because it's not really about Power BI Desktop, you know, note that I have the Power Query tool set and I'm able to create the extraction logic to get the data to basically build out a data model. So for instance, as I start pulling out data from one or more data sources, I can start building out my data model. Uh, and then at the very end, I can start building reports. Okay, now just a couple more things to note about Power BI Desktop. It's the primary tool for basically building data sets and doing data modeling and building reports. And it has a report authoring facility inside there. Many people that use this that have used, you know, five or ten other reporting tools in the past, you know, generally take to this tool very quickly. You know, if you've never used before, um, you know, I'd say your first experience, you might really get the idea that this is, you know, where you should be, you know, if you're going to be designing reports over the next couple of years. Okay, reports have multiple pages, and as we create our reports, we can basically work with that. Now, the next thing we care about is dashboards. However, you can't build a dashboard with Power BI Desktop. So let's go back to Power BI Desktop, and I have my project. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And as I choose Publish, hey, there's the new app workspace I just created. Now, let's go ahead and uh, push this out inside here. And so now I've taken my PBIX project file. And as you work with Power BI Desktop, Everything is in terms of a PBIX file. So I've now published the project, and what we should be able to do, you know, after this uh, publishing uh, chore is done, I could click on the link here, but why don't I just go back to the browser, and if we now go to our workspace here, and we drop down, you know, I can see that there is my data set, you know, there is the report that we just created. Okay, so inside of this app workspace, you know, here's the data set, there's the report. Now note that Power BI Desktop cannot create dashboards. So the final step after you publish your PBIX project you know, is typically opening up your reports and now going you know, into the reports and taking the visuals and creating dashboards inside there. You know, so let's say I'll call this one wingtip uh, sales uh, performance. And so now that we've created this dashboard, you know, there's one visual I'm going to pin here is a second that I'm going to pin. We'll put two more inside there. 
uh, you know, let's go over uh, and take uh, this one inside here and pin it. And then if I go here and just quickly pin one or two more inside here. Okay, so we'll pin uh, this dashboard tile and this dashboard uh, tile. You know, and so now that I've created this dashboard, you know, I can start moving the different uh, pieces around into different places. Uh, you know, note that when you create dashboards, you know, you have the ability to either show the title or hide the title. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm looking forward to my next demo where I take these dashboard tiles and I embed them inside of a Power App, a Canvas app. So what's important is the only way I can tell which one is which is by the title. So here, let me go ahead and just kind of change this uh, over to a column chart. And notice that I'm going to change the title. And then I'm going to say, don't show the title here, because I want to know which tile that is when I get into Power Apps in just a second. You know, if I go down here, let's kind of do the uh, you know same thing, uh, where I can now uh, take this and let's go ahead and hide this title. Let's go ahead and I want to pin this one or embed this one. So I'll say embed details and I'll change the title first. You know, so this one is the 100% uh, uh, chart inside there. Let's go ahead and now I'll get to the last one. And so now we'll go into edit details uh, and we'll go ahead and I'll just reference that as map and we'll go ahead and get rid of the title inside there. Okay, but now I've created a quick dashboard. So now we have kind of the three main components inside there. Once again, if I click on the landing page here, you know, there's the data set, there is the report, and now I've kind of used the browser to build out a dashboard. Now I have some content. Okay, let me go back to the slides for a second. Uh, and what we now want to look at, talked about creating dashboards, is a new feature that Microsoft just announced yesterday. You know, it's actually been in private preview for about six months now, and it's gone under different names. It used to be called data pools, uh, but now Microsoft has kind of come out and made a big broad announcement, you know, that data flows, you know, are now generally available in preview. I shouldn't say generally available. They are available in preview right now. Now, let's take a 10,000 foot view of what is a data flow. So data flows are basically data that you've extracted and you've basically pushed you know, into your Power BI environment. So what's going to happen is you're going to use Power Query, except the Power Query tool set won't be in Power BI Desktop. It will be available in the browser. And what you'll do is you'll create the exact same type of query logic, you know, typically by click, click, clicking, you know, or maybe if you're advanced by writing M code or copying and pasting M code. But the idea is instead of extracting the data and building a data set, you're building a data flow. And what's going to happen is the mashup engine that actually does that work, you know, is going to run in the Power BI service. Now, every data flow that you create will be created in the context of a Power BI app workspace. And now on top of the data flow, you can start building data sets. So there's this problem today where you have three different data sets, but they pull back the exact same data. And so you're basically doing the work three times to pull data across. You might have a problem where one of the projects has query logic that's not right, it's not cleansing the data. So now you have two different versions of the truth. You know, sounds pretty common after election day. Uh, but you know, what we see is that if you build a data flow, you basically have pulled the data, you've cleansed it a single time, and now we can build you know, multiple data sets on top of that. Okay, and then we build our reports and dashboards. So if you want to look at this in a pessimistic sense, you're adding another layer. Another layer you have to build a query on top of, and another layer you have to refresh. You know, but Microsoft's play here is to get Power Query and Power BI you know, into the big data space. So when you create data sets, how big can they get? They can get to one gigabyte, you know, unless you throw a couple thousand bucks at Microsoft a month for a premium capacity. You know, then you can get to 10 gigabytes, you know, but as we start dealing with data sets that have, you know, hundreds of billions of rows, we're going to need more space. And so as you build data flows, they're stored in the Azure Data Lake 
in what's called Gen 2 storage, and they're just stored as regular JSON files. But that adds this powerful dimension of scale and performance. You know, so when you're dealing with you know data sets that are incredibly large, you know, data flows really adds a nice layer. And not only can two authors you know, build their own data sets on top of this data flow, the data flow is also going to be available to other teams that are working with other artificial intelligence and analytic services uh, inside of Azure, you know, things like the Azure Data Warehouse or Azure Data Bricks uh, or Azure Machine Learning. So once we've cleaned up the data and we've prepared a data flow, it's consumable you know, by lots of different people. Uh, let's do a kind of a quick example of creating a data flow. So data flows are in preview. Let's go ahead and say, I want to create a new data flow. And so in our example here, we're going to define entities. So when I create a data flow, it's not just one query. It's like a data set. You can have as many queries as you want. I'm just going to build a single query here. Uh, but note if I come through here and we'll pick uh, Azure uh, SQL, uh, and now we'll go ahead and we'll add in uh, the information uh, that we need inside here. Uh, give me one second. Okay, let's grab that value. Uh, and so we have a server. We have a uh, database, Wingtip uh, Sales uh, DB. And I've already used this before, so it knows my credentials. You know, let's go ahead and choose uh, Next. And so here, we're going to get a Power Query experience, you know, but note that it's through the browser, you know, not through Power BI Desktop. So what we'll see is Power Query is surfacing more and more places. So we'll go ahead and take this particular uh, data set right here. You know, let's say that I don't need uh, all the data. So what I'll do is I'll take some of the columns. You know, that would make my data flow blow up uh, and some other columns that I don't need. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll remove those columns. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and choose Done. And it validates the query. So now, here's just one entity. That's not the data flow. Let's go ahead and click on Save. And so we'll save that as my uh, data flow inside here. And you know, once we go ahead and we uh, save this data flow, you know, it's going to ask me, do I want to refresh this now? You know, I'll say no. But let's go ahead and uh, close and save. And now I get back and you can see that you have dashboards, you have reports, you have data sets, and now we have data flows. If I drill into my data flow, it's a set of entities that are all queries. And there's all kinds of neat logic, uh, you know, in the sense uh, that <clears throat> a data flow can link to another data flow. There is a model driven calculation engine that is able to determine different dependencies. So if you, you know, decide that this particular data flow uh, needs to be refreshed you know, on a periodic basis, it knows what other data flows have to be refreshed as well. You, know, you can also create um, <clears throat> you know, calculated uh, entity values. You know, so as they load into memory, you know, your uh, data flow you know, actually has the logic uh, to perform calculations. Okay, and then once you've gotten that far, you know, let's go back to Power BI Desktop. You know, let's go back to connect. I want to connect to a data flow. Okay, there's your preview connector. Uh, you know, but what we're going to see here is that now my Power BI Desktop authors you know, can look at my different data flows. And you can see that they all live in an app workspace. Uh, and you know, as we uh, get inside here, uh, somewhere down here, my data flow uh, and demo one and products uh, and now we go ahead and uh, edit the data. You know, so now I just kind of build on top of data flows as opposed to extracting the data in the Power BI desktop projects. Okay, so hopefully that just gives you a quick appreciation for you know, what data flows are and how they fit in. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move into the content I promised to cover, you know, which is the integration points. Now the first one is real simple. If you are working with Power Apps, you know, we are going to be able to easily embed a Power BI dashboard title. Okay, let's see a quick demo. So back here, we'll move over into Power Apps. As I now open up Power Apps, 
we're going to create a uh, simple application. And <clears throat> this particular application that we'll be creating is just going to be a Canvas app. So let's go ahead and uh, make this application. And so let's say that I have a management team and there's a couple different things they want to look at, you know, on a very regular uh, basis. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this power app so I can basically see the dashboard tiles. Let's also down here, uh, I'll add a second screen. I'll add a uh, third screen inside here. You know, let's go ahead and kind of take the, this screen uh, and kind of change the color just to make the uh, demo a little bit more exciting here. Uh, and now we'll go to the third screen. Uh, and once again, we'll change the color. Uh, and so now that we've uh, done that, let's go to the first screen and we're going to go ahead and say insert a button. And I'm time constrained, so I really won't do uh, very much with the button, you know, other than uh, change this to uh, next. You know, but with the button, we'll say action and we'll say navigate to screen two. That sounds great. Okay, now with the button, I'll go ahead and copy it, and we'll now go to screen two. Uh, we'll paste this uh, inside here. Yeah, but now we'll say uh, navigate screen three. Uh, and finally, we'll go to uh, screen three, and we'll add the button, and we'll say uh, navigate back to screen uh, one. Okay, so at this point, if I go ahead and start the app, you know, I should be able to kind of just move between these three screens pretty easily. Okay. No rocket science yet. Now here's where we're going to add the tiles. So now if I go back to the insert menu, and in the insert menu we drop controls down and they hide it from people that don't know what they're doing because you have to scroll down just a little bit further right here, but there's the Power BI tile. Let's go ahead and add that inside there. You know, so now we'll go ahead and we'll add this uh, tile here. And when I add the tile, what's the workspace? It's Thursday demo. What is the dashboard? It's the one I just created. What is the title? And so here's kind of where I did that extra work before, uh, you know, because, you know, possibly here uh, we want the 100% map inside there. Okay, and now that we've got that, let's go ahead and uh, add that inside here. You know, one of the things that you'll see about dashboard tiles is they are very good when you change the width and height at being able to, uh, you know, come to a great resolution and still provide a good graphic to the user no matter what the form factor is. Uh, let's go to screen two here. You know, now let's go back to uh, controls and we'll go down to the bottom uh, and we'll add a second tile inside here. Uh, and once again, we'll go to the Thursday demo. We'll go to wingtip sales performance. Uh, this time we'll take the uh, map inside here. Okay, and now that we've got that, we'll go to the third screen. Uh, and as we get to the third screen, we're going to do the exact same thing. Go to controls, you know, go down, and we'll grab that one more tile. And now there is a third tile that we want to show. Okay, and so once I get all this uh, set up inside here, I think this one we want the uh, column chart. Okay. And so, you know, now we built this uh, app right here, you know, and now that we have uh, built the app, you know, let's go ahead and give it a test. We'll come back here. And now, you know, I've created something where my user can just now kind of move, you know, from one uh, tile to the next. And you can imagine that, you know, without very much effort, certainly this is a no code exercise that we're going through here. Uh, you know, we're able to, you know, produce some pretty good, um, you know, visualizations uh, to our particular users inside there. Okay, so that was the first thing that we've seen. And that is, you know, I can use the Power BI tile control in a Canvas app and Power Apps, you know, to quickly surface things. Now, a quick word about licensing. Unfortunately, today, there's really not any coordination between the Power BI licensing and the Power Apps licensing. Okay, most of us get our Power Apps licensing, at least for the usage, from the Office 365 or Dynamics 365 licenses we have, but Power BI is a different story. So when you create this, first of all, you have to have a Power BI Pro license in order to go work in an app workspace and create the report and create the dashboard tile. But then what if you have 100 different users that are consuming this? 
either everybody needs a Power BI Pro license or you need to work with Power BI Premium. You have to have a dedicated capacity and you have to pay Microsoft something in addition if you want users with a free license to be able to look at your content. Yes. So just remember that this is great, but don't get caught up with the licensing. You know, make sure you do your due diligence and figure out what the licensing implications are you know, before you start building something like this out. Okay, so now that you've seen that, let's look at the second thing that we can do. And that is extending a Power BI report with a Power Apps custom visual. So for this one, let's go ahead and uh, move back into Power BI. And so here, I'm going to go ahead and take the report that we already have. Let's go ahead and click on Edit Report. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a new page to the report for this demo. Now, in a second, I am going to add a new custom visual, which is the Power Apps custom visual. Before that, let's build out a little bit of a user experience. So let's say that uh, I add a slicer to this page. And then with the slicer, I'm going to go into the customers uh, table. Uh, and we'll take sales region. Uh, and then also with this slicer, it's going to look a little bit nicer uh, if we change it from vertical to horizontal. Okay. And so now that we've done that, uh, you know, we have this ability to pick a region. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and add a map. Just going to add a simple bubble map. And we'll basically start looking at the uh, user's uh, city inside here. Uh, or actually, I take it back. Let's go ahead and look at the state. Uh, and as we uh, look at the state, you know, maybe for uh, states uh, that are um, giving us the highest amount of sales revenue, we want a little bit more um, feedback on that. You know, so we'll have bubble sizes that are maintained. Okay, so the idea now is that I have some filtering set up, you know, in this particular uh, report. And so one of the main things I want to show in this demo is that when I embed the Power App onto this report page, the Power App is able to see the data behind the report, and it will also see as I filter the data. Okay, so that's what we're looking forward to. Now, step one, let me go ahead and save my report. You know, so we'll go ahead. Uh, actually, I've already saved the report, so I do a save as opposed to a save as. Uh, second, we're going to come back here, and we're going to say, I would like to import a custom Power BI visual from Microsoft's Marketplace. When they bring up this particular dialog, I'll just go ahead and do a search for uh, Power Apps. And there is the Power Apps custom visual. Let's go ahead and add that inside there. Now, as I add this thing inside, well, there's my visual. Let's go ahead and add it to the page. And I just did the mistake of forgetting to unselect the visual on the page. Let's try that one more time. Richard's laughing at me. I know he is. Uh, let's go back here. Now, once you add the visual, note that when the visual is selected over here, there is one well for you to add fields from the data set behind your report. And until you add at least one field, you're going to see that the whole Power Apps custom visual is grayed out. You know, so what do we want to see? Uh, you know, let's see that we'd like to see, uh, you know, what is the uh, customer uh, state? You know, and then within a state, you know, maybe we like to see, you know, things like uh, sales revenue. Uh, maybe I like to see uh, units sold. So what you can see here is I've started building out uh, the data that is going to be passed from the Power BI report into the Canvas app that I'm creating. Now here, I can go ahead and say create new. And that's going to kind of leave me in the report but it's also going to redirect me in a different uh, tab uh, into Power Apps. It will create a new app starting point, and then it will allow me to you know, do some modifications to it. Now, note as this comes in, uh, you know, we're able to kind of see you know, what is the uh, state inside there. Uh, you know, in fact, if I do this and I kind of uh, you know, decide that I wanted a little bit more uh, data. Let's go ahead and leave. Let's go back here. And I just realized that it might be better to have the whole state name. 
you know, rather than just the uh, state abbreviation. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of make a, a quick update, and then I'll click on this one more time. And so what we're going to see here is it creates my starting point, and I kind of wanted to give you confidence of throwing it away and starting again as you're, you know, beginning to work with this. Okay, so at this point, what happens uh, is it builds this out, and it did not do a good job there. Okay, I think I stripped your confidence. Let me go ahead and try this uh, one more time, just because something happened there, as I kind of did too. Okay, so one more time, we'll add this inside here. And now we'll add the state name, we'll add the sales revenue, um, and once I get this down, uh, okay, let's try this one more time. Uh, state name, we'll take and we'll add inside here. Uh, and then we will add uh, sales revenue. And then we will also add units uh, sold inside here. Okay, one more time, let's go ahead and choose create new. I just want to make sure all these fields are pushed through correctly. And now when we get to the other side here, you know, what we should see is that it has built out a uh, power app uh, for me inside there. Uh, and gosh, once again, three times is going to be a charm. Uh, I added the wrong thing inside. Okay, I promise this will be the last time I do this demo. One more time, we'll add it in, and I'll make sure, don't take region, uh, take state name, and sales revenue, and units sold. Okay, I think I've got it correct this time. Uh, this is going to populate as soon as we come back here, so let's kind of make it uh, pretty inside here, put it in the right position. Okay, one more time, hoping three times is a charm. Uh, we'll push this inside, and what we should see is it basically builds a starting point that has a single screen inside there. It builds out this gallery. Now that it's built out the gallery, let's go ahead and go to View. Let's go to Data Sources and click on Gallery. And this should be very familiar to many of you. And the fact that you're just basically working in Power Apps, you're bound to some data source, you're used to SQL, you're used to SharePoint lists, and now it's another new data source. It's read-only, you know, but if I come down here uh, and I decide I want a different layout, uh, you know, give me the title and subtitle inside here. And for the subtitle, uh, what do we want? You know, I want uh, sales revenue inside here. And maybe actually I got that backwards. For the title, you know, let's go ahead and pick the uh, state name. And then for the subtitle, let's go ahead and pick uh, sales revenue inside here. And as just regular Power Apps, I can come through here and say, you know, here is the uh, figure. So it's not adding, you know, any type of <coughs> um, formatting. You know, so I want to come through here. Uh, you know, kind of add the formatting uh, that makes sense, you know, for this uh, type of data inside there. You know, if I wanted to go, uh, you know, even uh, further with this, you know, I could do something, you know, such as uh, let's drill in, uh, let's go ahead and kind of uh, take this, make this a little bit bigger, let's go ahead and take this uh, and move it over inside here. And now, you know, this item uh, is not sales revenue. You know, it's the other one. You know, this one is uh, units uh, sold. Uh, and now we've got that inside. And this has different formatting. You know, so with this one, uh, you know, we'll format looking like this. Okay. And then if I want to go a little bit further here, you know, if I go back to this gallery, you know, notice that the data source is Power BI uh, integration. You know, so let's say that, uh, you know, as I take that, um, I want to basically, uh, you know, do something, you know, such as uh, sort. And what do I want to sort? And I'll just basically add that same data set uh, back inside there. Uh, and now I want to sort by sales revenue. Uh, and I want to sort by uh, sales revenue uh, in a uh, descending fashion. Okay. And so now that we've done that, we've got a starting point for our Power App. Now, let's go ahead and take that, and I'm going to go back here, and we're going to go to save. You know, I'll call this something like, uh, you know, Ted's PBI uh, Embedded App. And let's go ahead and click on save. You know, and as it saves this, let's go ahead and kind of go back and see what happens on the other side. 
And what you can see now <clears throat> is that you have a Power App that's been initialized in the context of this form. And so now, as I go through here and I kind of start looking at things, you know, into Central and I go into Eastern, you know, what you're going to see is that my Power App is responding. So what gets to be common, you know, is to use Power BI to search through 10 million customers and find the top 10 customers, you know, inside of a particular zip code, and then to be able to use Power Apps to initialize action, sending them email, sending yourself, um, you know, some type of a task to follow up with that particular customer. So the whole idea of write back, you know, which hasn't been supported in Power BI, Power Apps and Canvas Apps are positioned to be the main write back mechanism. You know, after you analyze and you want to act to write back or to initiate some type of task, you know, the Power App uh, gives you the ability to do that. Okay. So now we basically looked at two out of three. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at here, let's kind of move into our last section, uh, is designing flows to update data in real time. Now, we have to start by looking at a feature in Power BI, and we'll just stay in the same workspace here. Let's go ahead and say what I've done. Let's move back over here. Now, what I want to do at first is just give you a real quick indication of what real-time dashboards are without bringing flow in, and then after I kind of spend that five-minute intro on real-time dashboards, uh, we'll bring flow in and show how that can really help me, you know, into pushing rows in and being able to monitor things in real time. So I have this particular app workspace, and I look at my data sets. We have lots of different types of data sets that we can create in Power BI. You know, the most common one is the imported data set. However, if I drop down create, notice that I can also create another type of data set which is a streaming data set. Okay, let's go ahead and click on streaming data set. And the first streaming data set I'm going to create, let's say, will be um, expenses. You know, so I'll call this up in like uh, expenses. I'm not saying this is a good scenario to build a real-time dashboard. What I want to do is just kind of get some of the fundamentals out of how they work. Now, when you create a streaming data set, you get to name it and you get to decide what fields are inside there, but the table that's going to be created, so it's going to be a single table, is going to be called real-time data. So what we'll do now is we'll basically add fields to that one table that's going to be in our streaming data set. So let's say that the first one is going to be the expense, just some text, great. Uh, the second one uh, will be a category, and that will be text, and the last one you know, will be the expense amount and this one is going to be numeric. Now, down here at the bottom, there's this very important switch called historic data analysis. So if you leave this off, the streaming data set is in memory and it only holds on to the data for an hour. So what historic data analysis really means is you want to hold on to your data for 61 minutes or more. The other big thing about clicking this historic data analysis on is that it puts a Azure SQL database behind your data set. And one of the important things there, let's go ahead and choose create, is that if I go over here, you can kind of see that you have uh, a report design button. And just to kind of emphasize that one more time, let me go back to edit. Let me turn this off and choose done. And then after that, you need a hard refresh to be able to show this demo. Notice that there's no more create report icon up here. So you have to have the SQL database behind this in order to use the familiar Power BI reports designer. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Okay, now that I've done that, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to have to refresh one more time. And now let's go ahead and create a report. Now, with the report that I create here, let's create a table. You know, and the table will have an expense uh, and a category uh, and an amount inside there. And then also we'll create a, a bar chart, you know, and our bar chart will have the category, you know, as the legend and the expense inside here. Now, one issue 
is that I need to somehow get rows of data inside there. So this is real-time uh, demo. And the way that you do that is not going to be very straight ahead. Let's go back to data sets. Let's go back to this data set I've just created, and I'm going to go back to API info. So one of the issues with this is that you need to basically write a custom application to push rows of data inside. There's no easy way to get the push model other than creating a custom application, unless you wait to the end of the presentation where I talk about how to do it with flow. You know, but it's a much different problem because you're not pulling the data in where you could use Power Query. You need something to push the data in. So for the first demo here, I'm going to go ahead and click on PowerShell. Okay. If you don't work with PowerShell, you can ignore me for a couple seconds. But what I'm going to do here is let's go ahead and create a new text file. And I'll call that uh, my script.ps1. You know, so that is a uh, PowerShell script extension. I can now open this thing up inside of a PowerShell editor. And so what Microsoft has done is they've basically just given me some copy and paste text uh, that has the URL that we need to post to. You know, what is the uh, expense? You know, so let's say I need a uh, laptop, uh, you know, and what is the uh, category inside here? Uh, it is uh, hardware. Okay, and then what is the amount? So what I can now do is I can go ahead and click on this. And so it runs the script, you know, and as the script runs, it puts a row of data uh, inside. Okay, now um, I also realized that I think I cut something uh, off here at the uh, very end. Uh, let's go ahead and try that one more time. Okay, and um, payload, convert, what did I do incorrect there? <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, I want to get this demo. Let me try one more time to see if um, I can pull this out correctly. Okay, but what I wanted to show, and I'm kind of having a little, couple issues uh, getting this data out. Let me try this one more time. Copy. Uh, and now <coughs> we'll go um, back into my script. And we'll add that inside there. And so, oh, payload. No wonder this doesn't work. Okay. Uh, payload. Somehow I stripped off a whole bunch of stuff that was important. Okay, so uh, one more time. I'll try to run this right here so I can get to the important points. Okay, now it worked. Sorry for the delay there. Let's go back to our report. So I go back to our report here and I open that up. And as I uh, open this report, what I can see, you know, is that we should see some data, you know, that's been added inside there. Uh, I might have to click on the refresh link for that to show up. Okay. Also, if I come back here, um, and let's make sure that this uh, bar chart has the right details inside there. Okay. Let's go back, and let's change that to, you know, something else. Uh, you know, we bought some beer. Uh, and this is for uh, travel and uh, entertainment. Uh, didn't cost quite as much. Let's go ahead and click OK. And what you're going to see here is that reports do not automatically update. Instead, you're going to have to go and click on the refresh button. So here's where dashboards come in. If you have a real-time data set, let's go ahead and create a new dashboard. And this is going to be real-time uh, data. And we'll go ahead and add that. And then we'll go ahead and uh, add this one as well. Okay, and now that we've done that, let's go over to the dashboard uh, in question. And now let's go ahead and bring up the PowerShell script uh, one more time. Uh, and so now we go ahead and we get uh, more uh, beer inside there. Uh, and I go ahead and click OK. Now, and what we should see you know, is that each time I click this and it adds more data, the dashboard responds in real time. 
Okay, so the key problem we have is figuring out how to get some external agent to push rows of data into our Power BI data set. Okay, now, back to this issue of Twitter. By using flow, one of the things that you can do is you can create a flow whose trigger is incoming tweets that contain a specific hashtag. So here's what we're going to do to make that work. First of all, before we can go to flow, you know, we have to create the real-time uh, dashboard that we need. Okay, I keep jumping around. Let's go back here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say create, and we're going to say create a new streaming data set. And so I'm going to pick API. I'm going to pick next. And so this one, you know, will be the uh, Twitter uh, monitor, or maybe I'll call this Twitter data. And so now that we have that, we have to decide, you know, what are the fields that we want inside of our streaming data set? So we'll have tweet uh, text, you know, as number one. Uh, second, we'll have, you know, who uh, tweeted it. You know, we'll have tweeted by. Uh, next, we'll have the retweet count. You know, and this has to be uh, numeric inside there. Uh, after we have that, we will have the uh, tweet location. And finally, we will have the uh, tweet time. Okay, so now that we have, you know, those pieces right there, let's go ahead and choose uh, create. And now we've created that. Great. Now, at some point, we're going to need data inside there. Now, now, as I look back here and I look at Twitter data, gosh darn it, I forgot to turn on historic data. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, another neat trick is, as your dashboard is starting to fill with data, if you simply come here and toggle it, turn it off, turn it back on, it deletes the database and recreates it. So it's a quick way to kind of dump all your test data and kind of start from scratch. Okay, let's go ahead and choose done. Now I choose done. One more refresh. And now our Twitter data, you know, should have the report icon. So now let's go ahead and quickly create a dashboard here. So I start by creating a report that has the uh, tweeted by and also the uh, tweet uh, text inside there. Let's go ahead and save this. You know, so this is the uh, Twitter report. And generally you have to kind of build out the report in order to create the dashboard, which you're eventually going to need. Okay, and then also I'm going to take not the Microsoft map visuals, but I'm going to take the one from ESRI because it's a little bit better. And so now what we'll do is we'll say for the location, let's take that tweet location. One thing that this demo is dependent on is that when you create a Twitter account, you get to say where you're from. I'm from Tampa, Florida. You know, but if you say you're from Mars, you know, or you're from, you know, the dark beyond, it doesn't map anywhere. Um, you know, so just realize that, you know, mapping is not really guaranteed. Uh, okay, but now that we have that, let's go ahead and we'll take the tweet count and we'll add that, you know, into the uh, size of how big the bubbles will get inside there. And then if I want to show things like tweet text, you know, I'm going to add into tooltips, you know, what is the tweet text? Uh, who was it tweeted by? Uh, you know, maybe I have the tweet uh, time inside there. Okay, and now that we have that, let's go ahead and save what we've done here. And now we'll go ahead and create one more dashboard. You know, so this one is going to be the uh, Twitter uh, data that we have. And we'll basically pin number one. And now we will uh, pin uh, number two inside there. Okay. And so, you know, now that we've done that and we go ahead and we take a look at this particular dashboard, uh, we should be able to you know, now move to the next step. You know, which is going to be basically building the logic to watch incoming tweets in Twitter and to basically push rows into our real-time data set, you know, when we see things that we, uh, you know, want to capture. Okay, so let's go back, and now we'll go into Microsoft Flow. Now, if you work with Microsoft Flow but haven't worked with it for a couple days, you'll notice that we have a brand new UI, you know, as of about a week ago, uh, with the navigation is down the left side, you know, instead of over the top. 
If I look at my flows inside here, you know, I can see different flows that I've built. So let's go ahead and choose new. And I'm going to use a template for my starting point. So we'll say create from template. And up here, I'm going to say, let's go ahead and look at all the templates for flow that basically involve tweets. So there's a good starting point right here. Email yourself a tweet about a certain keyword. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that. Now, with Microsoft Flow, it's going to make you provide credentials so that you can connect to Outlook and you can connect to Twitter. And also, the first time you use one of those connections, it's going to prompt you to basically say that you trust this app to basically go to Twitter and to go to um, you know, Outlook email uh, and to basically uh, do work on your behalf. Okay, now I've already okayed these, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, continue. Now, next thing we do is, what is the term we want to search on? You know, so as I said at the beginning, uh, we're going to search on the hashtag Power Apps. Now, if I look at this flow, they've already added this first trigger. You know, when a new tweet appears, you know, that contains this hashtag, trigger the flow. Now, they've also added Get User from Twitter. So when the first trigger runs, it has output variables about the tweet itself, but not very deep information about the user. So this flow has then added something to basically take the user ID, go back to Twitter, and get more information about that user. And then right now, it's basically set up to you know, send an email. I can get rid of this, uh, or in this case, I'll just go ahead and add it. You know, but what comes next is going to be the important part. So we're going to say, let's add a new step. And when I say add a new step, we're going to go ahead and search for uh, Power BI, Power BI with one E. Uh, so note down here that there's only one action for flow with Power BI. Okay. What you have down below is a bunch of uh, custom connector functions that I've created. You know, but the only one that's now supported, and it's in preview, it's not even a you know, released feature, is the add rows to a data set. And more specifically, it should say add rows to a streaming or hybrid data set. So now it basically says, uh, what is your workspace? Great. Uh, what is the data set? And I named it Twitter data. And then finally, remember that I wasn't allowed to name the table because when you create a streaming data set, it has a single table and they always name it for you and that's real-time data. Okay, now that we've done that, you have the tweet text inside here. You know, so let's go ahead and I'll make things a little bit smaller here. Uh, but, you know, what is the tweet text? So notice that in flow, you have information about the user. Let's go down below. And then there's also information about the tweet itself. You know, so the tweet itself will basically have the tweet text inside there. Uh, let's go ahead and add that. And then tweet by. So now if I go to the user, you know, do I want the user name or do I want the user screen name? When it comes to retweet count, well, that's not information about the user. That's information about the tweet itself. So you go down here. At first, you don't see it. Note that when you start using Flow, see more becomes one of your best friends because it just always appears that whatever you're looking for is not there at first. You click on see more. Uh, and now I'll come down here, and there is going to be the uh, retweet uh, count inside here. Uh, and now let's go ahead and add the uh, tweet location. And that's basically what the user has put inside there. And remember, that's just arbitrary text that the user has typed in. And the ESRI visual that I've used in my dashboard is just much better than the Microsoft visuals, you know, as far as just taking arbitrary text and resolving it to a location on the planet Earth. Okay, and then there's tweet time. Now, there's nothing from the steps above me that give me the time. You know, so here's a case where I'll just go into add an expression uh, and I'll say something like uh, UTC uh, now. Now, I could convert that to my time. If you start working with flow and you start using times, realize that they don't assume any time zone. So all the times are kind of Greenwich Mean Time uh, in the UK by default. And if you would like to kind of move that, you know, that's up to you. That takes extra work. And we won't do that here. Okay. Well, now we've got the flow. You know, let's go ahead uh, and save our flow inside here. 
Okay, now there is something about this demo and hooking everything up where quite often it takes between five and 15 minutes before you actually start seeing data. So for that reason, I decided to, uh, you know, pre-create this ahead of time. Let's go back uh, over here. You know, let's now go down to uh, the Twitter monitor right here. Uh, and let's go ahead and open this up right here. You know, so, you know, what we can see now uh, is over the last hour, you know, I've been capturing uh, different tweets from some of you. Okay, here's kind of me out of Tampa, Florida. Uh, but, you know, what we can see is that Power Apps, or I'm sorry, Flow is continually, you know, monitoring Twitter, you know, and as these tweets come in with things that I want to know about, it basically forms the trigger for me to push new rows, uh, you know, inside. Okay. So that kind of takes us, you know, through uh, the last demo that we have. Now, just to kind of close out, uh, what I want to do is kind of spend the last uh, two minutes with some shameless uh, marketing uh, plugs. So if working with the Power BI platform, you know, is interesting to you, uh, if you come over to criticalpathtraining.com, you know, we have a couple different courses. You know, one, we have the Power BI certification uh, boot camp. You know, and so we're teaching that in Florida December 10th. Many people take our courses remotely. You know, it's about 50% uh, stay where they live and kind of connect inside there. Uh, so this is three days of really drilling down into Power BI, and we've added, you know, data flow coverage uh, to this uh, event. And then also there is a deep dive into Power Apps and Flow. If you move over to deep dive into Power Apps and Flow, you know, that is a two-day course that follows a three-day course. So you can actually take both courses, the Power BI Certification Bootcamp and this two-day Power Apps and Flow, and we have a special deal where we'll give you five days of training for the cost of four days. Uh, you know, but if drilling down and spending some time with us to really learn this stuff uh, is important to you, you know, please consider us uh, inside there. You know, so uh, with that, I've now kind of covered uh, everything that I wanted to cover here. Note that at Critical Path, we will send out a follow-up email tomorrow uh, and I'll provide you access to the slides that we have here. Uh, and also, the recording of this will be posted, and the follow-up email uh, will have uh, that as well.